Hi everyone and welcome to another edition of Luxury Insider. I'm your host Sarah Colbin and today I'd love to introduce you to Jay Rutland, Creative Director of Maddox Gallery. Hi Jay, how are you? Hi Sarah, how are you? Good, 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 thank you. How's everything been going during these unpredictable times? It's been uh, it's been good actually. I mean, from a from a personal perspective, I've enjoyed the peace and the quiet a little bit, and and the opportunity to um, to spend a little bit more time at home with my wife and my daughter, um, which has been nice. You mm. know, we haven't ever had such an extended period of time all together before, so that's been nice. Um, and then from a business perspective, it's been mixed. I'm, I'm involved in various different businesses, but specifically with the gallery it's actually been really good um Fantastic. we were already quite geared up towards selling online um selling via email um and what's actually surprised me the most is when we compare performance of this year to last year in both april and now may our total sales exceeded 2019's performance gosh check that out which I never would have expected, if I'm being honest. When, when this first happened and it started to become, I guess, quite apparent that it was actually serious, because I remember initially when I first heard about the virus, I don't know, whenever that was, January, February, mm -hmm. um, my attitude, which is kind of, I guess, my attitude in general was, it'll be fine. And it's, you know, I remember saying to my wife, this is not going to be a problem. And then gradually it started to become apparent that actually yeah. it was a problem. Yeah, and that we were probably going to have the same issues that Italy and Spain had had, and even even then, I still didn't expect the the lockdown to last as long as what it has. No um, way. I don't think anybody has, to be honest with you, Jay. I think it's been one of those things where we've literally had to take each day as it comes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but it's worked out. Yeah, I mean, in terms of the gallery, Maddox, it's it's worked out well for us. The team are all focused and working from home um a lot of them are enjoying working from home which yeah, I bet. <laughs> um we've just started reopening the gallery for appointment only which has been which has been good also because we've seen quite a, a good uptake from clients and prospective clients that wanted to come in for that that more personal experience mm -hmm. um yeah and all in all from both my perspective and and from what i can see from the you know the team everybody's actually kind of adjusted to it really well adjusted to it that's great so can you tell our viewers then about maddox gallery how did it all start how did you start you know the building blocks of of the gallery now you've got three or four or five even when i was looking five, yeah three in london one in stard and one in la um, with a potential new site in london in the next three to four months um, exciting something that nobody else knows so that's an exclusive well, there but, yeah. you go thank you very much i'll tick that box <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'll tell you more about that in a bit if you want but um yeah, how did it first so my personal passion for art um really i guess first came about when i was very early 20s 2021 something like that my sister's husband was and is a huge collector of Banksy. Um, and back then I'd never heard of Banksy and I'd, I'd go to my sister's, back then I, I feel like I used to go there every other weekend and literally every spare bit of wall space that my sister had was a Banksy. At one point, I, you know, her and her husband had, I don't know, 60, 70 of them. There was a lot of Banksy work. And, and as I say, I'd never heard of Banksy at that time. Um, but my brother-in-law obviously had a real passion for, um, for the artist and hence why they had so many of them uh, and always would, would tell me about Banksy and why he loved Banksy so much. And I guess that was where my very first initial interest came from. Um, I then went and bought a Banksy. I was about 21, 22. I've still got it now. Oh um, and, and that passion for art gradually grew and, you know, I would buy as and when my finances allowed, I'd buy mm -hmm. another little piece here and there, usually mm -hmm. print rather than original, because mm -hmm. it's original, because it's what I could afford. Yeah. Um, and then around about 2015, the idea for Maddox was born. Um, we opened in December 2015, and it's uh, 
and it's just grown from there really never never in a million years did we anticipate that not even five years later there'd be five galleries yeah oh, uh, no. you know with a potential six on the horizon um and especially with galleries all over the world you know as i say three in london one in switzerland one in stad stad is amazing uh, the gallery there's maybe my favorite which i'm probably not allowed oh, to say look out. It's, <laughs> um, but we have a house in stad so we spend a lot of time there mm. and the the clientele we get in stad's phenomenal um, yeah, i bet, and it's I bet. A really really lovely gallery space there and I, I, you know but as i say probably my favorite so when I was looking into Maddox, I was looking at ways in which you uh, look for upcoming artists. It's more of like a blue yeah. chip setup, isn't it? So can you tell us a bit more about that? So the, the kind of the business of Maddox is really split between primary and secondary artists. Um, primary being the artists that we represent mm -hmm. uh, and secondary artists being uh, the, the really the kind of the key blue chip artists that we all know and have heard of your Basquiat, your Banksy's, your Warhol's, mm -hmm. Herring's, many of whom are, are no longer with us. Some of them, some of them, of course, are. Um, well, we don't represent them, but we are actively buying their work on the secondary market. Okay. Um, on the secondary side, if I'm being completely honest, uh, it's really focused on a group of about, I think, 12 artists. Mm -hmm. Um, many of whom I've got in my own personal collection because they're artists that I personally love. Yeah. Uh, and they're all that are very popular. And then in terms of the artists that we represent, w of which there's a number, I think there's about 15 in total. So these are artists where we are actively representing them. We are actively dealing with them and their studios. Mm -hmm. Any works that we're showcasing come direct from the artist studios. Um, and in, in terms to answer your question, how we look for artists, how we, you know, the, really a lot of it comes down as in my role as creative director, that's one of the key responsibilities to find new talent. So a lot of it comes down to my own personal taste. <laughs> uh, yeah, I bet. But to a degree, the success really um, is reliant on my personal taste being reflective of. I guess the general market, what, you know, what a lot of people like, if I had very unique taste, it, it perhaps wouldn't work so well. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, my eyes, I guess in that respect, quite important. I can, I can identify artists that not only do I love, but also that hopefully other people will love as well. Um, and it's not just about the artwork. It's also for me about the story. Yeah. About the story, yeah. where they've come from, how they've got to where they are now. Um, and also their vision for where they want to take their work and how they want to evolve it. So do you think since this, these times in particular in your business, you've seen a lot of adaption to change even with the artists and, and how are you seeing, I suppose, what's the silver lining we were talking about earlier, you've had your personal, you know, spending quality time now with the family, but how do you see that in a business sense moving forward? Um, so for the artists, I think lockdown has been heaven mm. because it's an them to just really focus and concentrate on putting in some studio time. Mm. Um, one of the biggest problems artists have, I think, is finding that time to really just dedicate to creating a body of work. They're constantly in demand, whether that be for public appearances or they've got to go and do signings or they've, you know, there's, they're always being pulled from pillar to post and actually being able to, dedicate that time to studio time mm -hmm. for, for an artist is phenomenal yeah um, I bet and to slow down the art has been great yeah. and and for us uh, one of the great things for us also is that we were able to one of the things the early things that we did um, in lockdown is we started an initiative called art for heroes yeah and if you saw it you're aware of it but yeah um, I looked it up yeah it's a gallery that gave us an opportunity to give something back. I think Art for Heroes launched in March. Mm -hmm. um, and it came about because my friends Joe and Carly Cole, so Joe Cole being the ex-England and Chelsea footballer, uh, Joe messaged me about a charity that he'd become an ambassador of called Heroes, which uh, was a charity or is a charity that is founded or was founded by 
NHS doctors and nurses mm -hmm. and the head of equities at Barclays. Mm -hmm. So you had a good kind of mix there of yeah. entrepreneur, uh, but also your frontline NHS staff that really understand where the NHS needs help. Um, and that, that was something that appealed to me very early on, that this is a, a charity that's really making a difference for those frontline NHS workers. So we got behind it. Initially, Joe just asked me, you know, can you help? Can you support? Can you maybe donate a piece of art? And, and all of which we were happy to do. But I kind of went away that night and thought about it and spoke to some of the, um, the kind of the key people at Maddox. And, and really that discussion was, what can we do more? Mm. And the idea of Art for Heroes was born, which was, in effect, we, we kind of got all of our artists to donate a piece of art um, whereby all of that artwork was available to, for sale on the Art for Heroes website, artforheroes.co.uk, yep. where the full proceeds from the sale of all of those pieces of art goes to the charity. And that charity is helping in a number of ways, but in effect, it's buying PPE equipment, it's yeah. paying for emergency child care for, um, for the doctors and nurses. It's giving small monetary grants to the doctors and nurses. It's, it's delivering hot meals to the hospitals and, and a whole host of other ways. Um, but a really great charity. And as of today, we've raised just over 1.1 million. Gosh, so, that's incredible. Yeah, of money. Congratulations. So we have donated really as a business. Our artists donated artwork. Um, people were able to buy that artwork. People were also able to just donate a monetary amount as well if they wanted to. Um, we got a whole host of press coverage about it, which really helped because obviously it raised awareness. Yeah, of course. And, uh, yeah, really great. Really, really proud of what we achieved with that. and really proud of how that money's being allocated and how it's yeah. helping as well. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And I think during these times and even in Yossing as well, we found that it's pulling the community together as a whole and just saying, look, guys, this is what we do. But at the same time, this is where we can all give back, you know, because I Definitely. think during any of this time, we've felt, I know personally, I felt a bit helpless to start with because I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nurse, you know, I'm not frontline staff, but how can we help? And I think raising awareness and doing these types of initiatives are, are really great. So congratulations, that's wonderful. Thank you very much, thank you. Um, so really in a whole in general, what are you predicting um, in the future for the art business now that we've had this bit of a shift and a shake? Good question. Um, I think things are unquestionably going to change. Mm -hmm. um, it's very difficult to predict to what extent things are going to change because there's so many unknowns at the moment, right? Mm -hmm. um, so one thing that we've seen, for example, is it clearly because we're still doing sales and they, they can't come from people walking into the gallery because the gallery are closed. So we've seen a huge uptick in people buying on the telephone, people buying online. Um, we were one of the first to introduce virtual galleries. So we, in effect, one of the things we, we launched just, just recently was a David Yarrow virtual gallery. Um, and, but I mean virtual in the truest sense of virtual whereby it wasn't a, a kind of Google 360 Matterport, you know, <laughs> virtual map. Yeah. This was actually a, a virtual exhibition in a virtual space. So a space that doesn't actually exist in the real world. But when you look at it on your iPhone or your iPad or your PC, it looks so realistic. Mm -hmm. You'd really have to, you know, to, to take notice to realize that actually this is not a real space. Um, right. All of the artwork is captured in kind of 8K crisp, um, uh, I'm trying to think of the right words. Uh, like a format uh, production. Image, yeah. I mean, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's brilliant and the reaction to that has been great. As I said, a lot of people buying online and buying over the telephone that normally perhaps wouldn't have done. Um, something that's going to be interesting for us, and this is the, the unknown for me at the moment, mm -hmm. is just how quickly people are going to be comfortable coming back to big gallery openings. Absolutely. Um, yeah. You know, something that we've made our name for mm. in the art world in the last five years is these quite lavish opening private views. I know you've been, been to a couple and, yeah. um, and we do something, you know, it's, it's a little bit different. Our openings have, have really been known for that kind of party atmosphere where 
it's not um, your, your kind of perhaps typical boring art gallery opening. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, you know, on a on a popular private view, we'll have two, three, four hundred people through the doors over the course of the night. I don't know how soon people are going to be comfortable doing that again. Yeah, um, exactly. It's a, we actually incidentally just sent out a Maddox um, customer survey yesterday, to, uh, and that was one of the questions. On, oh, good. You know, when, yeah. when lockdown ends, how soon are you anticipating visiting a gallery again? And it was encouraging, actually. The results that we got, I think it was 65% of people that answered the survey said that they would be expecting to visit a gallery again within the first couple of months. Oh, that's um, great news. Yeah. yeah just don't know but it will um it will be interesting to see how the kind of the, the the consumer mindset has changed as a result of what we've seen over the last couple of months yeah and um, especially if you're rolling out virtual uh you know showcases and viewings like sometimes people can get a little bit comfortable can't they you know with yeah. the new technology to say oh what's happening here but don't get me wrong jay i think to be able to be, I think people are eager to be around people again. It's just taking that first step of confidence yes. to do it. So I couldn't agree more. But and, and sure I think especially with art, as great as it is to see, you know, of course you can you can look at art on a computer screen. You can look at it in a in a PDF. But for me, no, yeah, there's no like seeing a piece of art in the flesh and and being able to see the texture of the art and all yeah. of the kind of the perfect imperfections and the framing and the, just the medium. There's so many different elements to a piece of art that really a picture doesn't really do justice to. No, no, exactly. Well, I know, like you said before, you know, your, your openings and launches and events are spectacular. So to be able to offer people a great excuse to come along and, and you know, see everybody again in the, in the art world and, and give people that platform to be able to do that, then that's you guys for sure, definitely. Yeah. Um, the nice thing is mentioned before as well that we're looking at opening a new space. So yeah, I mean, this is I'm important to know. Possibly shooting the gun a little bit here because it's not all signed <laughs> and, and uh, done, but we've been, we've been talking to Smallbone now for the last few months about uh, a collaborative space on Brompton Road, um, 15,000 feet. Ooh. which would be a collaboration between Maddox and Smallbone, um, where there will, there will be a, a large space, which is exclusively Maddox, but then the rest of the space will be a combination of the Smallbone luxury kitchen, Smallbone luxury office space and furniture, but peppered with the Maddox artwork to show that will look in a, in a kind yeah, of... Yeah, giving them the, the, whole, the whole look and feel. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's a great collaboration. Well done. Really great collaboration and what I love about the space, which also ties into what we were just talking about, is it's 15,000 square feet, so significantly bigger than what we have in any of our other galleries, which will hopefully then also enable us to do those big opening exhibitions and still have the same amount of people there, yes. but spread around a much bigger space, which I think certainly for the immediate future will make everybody a lot more comfortable. Oh, definitely. Well, congratulations. That's really Thank exciting. You very much. Make, make yes. sure I'm on that list for that opening of, for sure. of that gallery. <laughs> definitely. So, if people want to get in touch uh, with you guys and obviously find out a bit more, uh, then obviously we've got your website, which I'll I'll post at the end of the interview, and uh, yeah. obviously any contact information and social sites and things like that. Um, will be up there and uh, it was funny I I had an interview this week with an interior designer and she said all they've literally do, been doing the past few weeks is buying art so there you go so hopefully there's a there's a nice introduction there for you as well right. so but thank you so much for joining us and taking time out to speak to us um, at Luxury Insider. I'm just glad I managed to get some Wi-Fi it was a yes. real struggle. <laughs> yes, I know. I know the whole of the yachting world would be very surprised that we've managed to pull this off. I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> but thanks. I cannot very much. tell you the aggravation I had trying to get Wi-Fi today. But we <laughs> no. Well, say thank you to the team for me and uh, for manoeuvring you around to find the best spot. So um, thanks very much, and for everybody thank who's watching. 
Uh, thank you for watching Luxury Insider for Yachting International Radio. Take care and stay safe.